Hi, this is Bert Berger, and right now I'm going to take you through some of the features, uh, some of the design features of our speed model SUP. We've chosen a, um, a board out of the production line, so I can also discuss with you on this particular board some of the technical aspects and some of the information about the build. So one of the first features about the speed is it has quite a wide nose and a fairly parallel outline up front. So with all that nose area, it means as you're stroking into a wave, as the board's going forward, it really climbs up on top of the water early and easily because all the water that's coming into the front of the board comes underneath the board as opposed to a narrower nose which tends to divide and split the water. So the board's a really good paddler. Now, the, most of the outline is, is relatively drawn out and straight. So what that tends to do is give a longer, more drawn out turn. So when you're standing up in the middle of the speed, it does want to hold a clean, fast line. And the trims are a little bit more drawn out. But then what we've done to compensate for that is down in the tail area, <clears throat> we've put a bump or a hip in the outline and we've also really pulled the tail area in. So this means with this break in the outline, as you're on the rail and you're going through a bottom turn, as your weight transitions onto the back foot into this area here, this bump or this hip kicks into play and the board will really hook around and it'll do a tighter turn. And then by pulling in the area back here, we've made it so that it's more manageable, so that when you do a rail to rail transition turn off the back foot, it's gonna happen a little quicker. When you've got a really wide tail, the transition from one rail to the other rail just takes longer. So it's a slower rail to rail transition. So by pulling the tail area in, it basically quickens up that rail to rail transition and enables you to still sort of turn under the lip and to get a sort of a, a snappy feeling off the back foot. The thickness, we've pulled the rail really low on the speed, similar to our acid model, same type of concept. So this board, even though it's got thin rails, it's very stable to paddle at low speed. So what that does is because the rail line is sitting below the water when you're paddling, the board won't tip so easy because it's actually got water on top of the rail, like holding it down, as opposed to a really thick board, which is like a cork, which bobs around on top of the water. So it's counterintuitive, but most people think that more thickness is gonna give them more stability. That's not the case. When the rail line is low and the water, and the, the rail is literally underwater, it's being held down by the water. So the second aspect of that is that once you're actually up and riding and you're on a wave and you wanna bury the rail and push it through a turn, you're not fighting this big fat rail into the water, but you've got this nice low profile rail that's really easy to bury and sink and stay buried and power through your turn. So it really sort of cuts through the water like a knife through butter. And that's what this thinner rail will do. We've got what I would consider a high, a high performance rocker in this board. Like even though it has a lot of nose area, we've kept the nose out of the water by having a fair amount of nose rocker on this board. So there's a lot of aspects about it where you have a good paddling board that still surfs well. We set it up as a thruster. All the speeds are set up as thrusters. That's just a performance option. When you have your side fin in the water, you have so much more bite or pull into a turn. Now another interesting thing with the speed is we've set these channels up in the bottom. So they actually help to give the board that little bit more bite. It's almost like they're acting like little mini fins almost. And so with this leading one here being positioned relatively close to the fin, plus sitting right on this bump in the outline, it gives a real defined pivot point to the turn. So literally you'll feel it as you lean into the turn and then there'll be this, this real defined moment where you feel the board kick into the turn. So again, it leads to good high performance surfing. Okay, so if I had to generalize or I had to summarize this particular board, it's a really good high performance SUP. It handles a range of conditions. It's good, it's fast, 
and advanced surfers will really appreciate this board.